Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist, sitting down to reply to Math the Beautiful, uh, Pavel Grinfeld, um, some of the videos he's done saying that tensors are great, because they are, but I'm trying to say, you know, I think these space-time space -time numbers, which is a variation on quaternions, are even better. So in his Rules of the Game Tensor 1 video, he writes out the definition of a dot product. So he says, you know, you've got these things that are directed line sem segments, call this one U, and another one called V, and there's this dot product of the two, which is U dot V equals the absolute value of U times the absolute value of V times the cosine of the angle between the two. And that works in any arbitrary dimension. But I am focused on space-time because that's where I get to do EM, the standard model, general relativity, and <laughs> that's about all I care about uh, being able to do, things uh, on, on that kind of physics nature. And I'm exploring what it's like to use this technical variation on quaternions. So now I see several questions that naturally come up when you think about this. And that is, well, what do you get out of this? Do you get another li directed line segment? And of course not. You get a scalar. But what's a scalar's relationship to a vector? They're not the same, but can't you formalize the relationship? And gee, you took the cosine, but what about the sine? Shouldn't that be some kind of thing? Well, it is for quaternions. And this is not a general answer. This won't work in arbitrary dimensional space. But for what we're going to do, it, there are solid answers to all of those re legitimate questions. So we're going to think about a scalar A combined with that three vector U and a, a different scalar B and the same uh, three vector V and say, well, what do you get when you uh, form the uh, space-time number product? You get, well, scalar times a scalar is a scalar. And then, yes, you do get that exactly the same dot product, but there's this minus sign in there. We're not going to worry about it because we're not worriers cosine alpha. Great. Then, well, for the three vector, how about a scalar times a vector? Well, one of them would be that. And the other one would be u. Let me make sure that's a v. u and, um, and that one. And then you get the sine over here. Uh, and this is now the sine alpha. And that is the product. And now to me, that looks, has a feeling of completeness in the sense that this is all the possible ways you can have interact between the scalar and the vector. You got the scalar scalar, you've got the scalar times a vector and the vector times a scalar. And then you have two sorts of products here. You've got a dot product, which they told you about, and you have the cross product. And a lot of people like get crazy about that cross product. Oh, it's so hard, it's so difficult. Well, this way it just looks complete, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, you took the sine, the cosine over here, and that was like, yeah, that's easy. It's all in the same direction. And now this is kind of the right angle stuff. This is the odd functional kind of expansion of it in a way. So this is u dot v, and this is u cross v. So to me, that is more beautiful because it feels complete. There's nothing else you can do between a scalar and a three vector product than that. And that's why I like it. Thank you very much.